بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى I want to talk about two phases, two phases of the fitans. And uh, the first is a narration of the Prophet ﷺ that will happen in my feeling so far, will happen after the first phase that we're going through right now. So let me start by explaining the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which the Prophet says what will happen when the fitans increase and you actually have to leave the city. Okay. So the Prophet said وسلم, and let me show you the narration actually in its uh, proper place first. عن أبي سيد الخضري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم يوشك أن أن يكون خير مال مسلم perhaps there will there is a fear that a time will come okay that the خير المال المسلم the best wealth a Muslim will have is a غنم is it like a a sheep okay now, <coughs> if you uh, look in the olden days, the sheep was not considered to be uh, something of great wealth. It was not considered, even in the time of the Prophet uh, the sheep was not considered something that would be like, oh, this guy has sheep, he's rich. No one would think that. Okay, so, but over here, uh, you have the Prophet وسلم, giving the example of sheep as wealth. Okay? And not just wealth, khairi mal al Muslim. The best of the wealth a Muslim would have. Ghanam. Yatba'uha. And he would have to follow with that sheep. He would have to go. Biha. Sha'af al Jibal. He would have to go to the peaks of the mountain. Okay? And so he's in a take uh, the sheep into the areas where there's a lot of greenery okay and the sheep eats the uh, you know the sheep knows where its food is kind of and you follow the sheep and you live as a nomad okay and you're living as a nomad and you're following the sheep and uh, and the places of rain because it rains here one day rains another place another day and the Mu'min is trying to take his sheep from one place to another. Why does he do this? So this, this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> connects to what? It connects to Surah uh, Al-Kahf. يُفِرُّ بِدِينِهِ مِنَ الْفِتْرِ he, he, he flees with his deen from the fitans. Okay, he flees from his deen for the fitans. Now, I just want to mention a scene of this has happened even recently when the British government uh, took over uh, India, the Arab world, when the British government took over at that time. What happened? Many Muslim scholars, they took the lead in this, like Imam Bejuri, for example, uh, many of the great Muslim scholars, uh, especially in Al-Azhar uh, from Egypt, they, they went off to the mountains. They just, when they knew that they didn't have the power to deal with the, uh, the onslaught of the French, for example, uh, they just simply isolated themselves and went to the mountains. Imam Bejuri went to the mountains and then Imam Bejuri later on after uh, some time, some years, uh, came back. So, <coughs> Sheikh Al-Azhar even did that. But uh, there will come a time, he, a man will have to make a choice, will have to make a choice to run for to save his deen and his iman. Okay? So this is why 
it is so important, why it is so important, why you have to find a jama'ah in your local area and pray with them, train with them, exercise with them, study the deen with them, make hijrah plans with them, hijrah plan A, hijrah plan B, and just get ready. Your objective to be online is to get offline. Your objective to be online is to learn the skills, get connected with the people, all that, so that you can be offline. Because one day, you're going to have to run to save your deen. And if you have a jama'ah, like Ashab al-Kahf, it's better. Okay? It's better. And so, the second uh, fitan that will come before this phase... Okay, is the one I have talked about previously, but I wanted to connect the two, and I will give some explanation of this. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, inna bayna yaday is sara." Indeed, before the hour, fitnan there will be fitnas, qat al layl al mudlim, like the dark pieces of the night. What will be the result of that? It will be a time where you will feel your deen and your iman is being challenged. يُصْبِحُ رَجُلُ فِيهَا مُؤْمِنٌ A person will wake up as mu'min وَيُمْسِي kafir, And you go to sleep as kafir. وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا Or in the evening he will be a mu'min وَيُصْبِحُ kafir, But by morning time he'll be a kafir. At that time, Al-Qa'idu Khayrun Min Al-Qa'im The one who is sitting down will be better than the one who is standing up. So the one, so in the same room, imagine in the same room, there is one person, he's sitting, and another person who is standing. The Prophet is saying that at two things, the different positions of your body, the different movements of your body, is somehow connected with people leaving Islam. So, Al Qaidu Khayru Min Al Qaim, the one who is sitting is better than the one who is standing, Wa Yamshi Khayru Min Al Sa'i, and the one who is walking is better than the one running. Okay, and then at that time the Prophet said, Fakasaru Kisakum. At that time, Break your arrows. Okay? وَقَطْعُوا أَوْتَارَكُمْ Okay? And break your فَكَسَّرُوا قِيسَكُمْ وَقَطْعُوا أَوْتَارَكُمْ وَضْرِبُوا سُيُوفَكُمْ بِالْحِجَارِ And strike your swords on the stones. فَإِن دُخِلَ if somebody enters your house, for example, يعني على أحد منكم over any of you فليكن خير ابن آدم then be better of the two sons of Adam. This is specifically referring to a situation where there are Muslims and Muslims are in such a fitna they're entering into the houses of other Muslims. So now we have three things in this phase. We have people who are becoming kafir, waking up as mu'min, going to sleep as kafir. Their position of their body is dictating who is in a better state of keeping their iman versus losing their iman. And there is a chance that someone will come into your house and you will, ha you will have to perform the deed of non-violence and you will have to try to be the better son of Adam When will this happen? And when will somebody flee to protect his deen? <coughs> and what is this hadith? Probably or not probably but possibly referring to. You see <coughs> if in one house there's one person sitting, another house in and this same house somebody is in another room standing, in another room somebody is walking, 
and another person's running outside the house. <coughs> what is this? It is the the level of the usage of the 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 waves, uh, the radiation, the frequencies that are being used and consumed for information. Okay, by which then people are led to a path outside Islam. For example, what is happening with this gay pride uh, situation. People are led to a situation outside Islam. And people will start saying things that will break their iman and they may not even know it. Okay. And it will be through this uh, overload of information that uh, wars will start. An overload of information that will end in a economic devastation that people will enter your houses for food. Okay. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because with what? With the lockdown, it means everyone's fixated on what? On internet. And this lockdown will lead to what? It'll lead to an economic collapse, which will lead to people starving for food, which means then you will, your brother needs food and he's in your house to get it. Well, if he's in your house to take your food, even if it means to kill you, then the Prophet said, if you don't have a jama'ah, if you don't have help, then be like the two sons of Adam. Okay? Because you want your last moments not fighting. You want your last moments just accepting what is coming. Unless you're in a jama'ah, and then the Amir and the jama'ah and the shura, they will decide what is the best course of action. That is another hadith of the Prophet wasallam. But I'm simply saying that what these two fitnas, the two phases, the first phase is a phase of where the person, it'll be like a dark night, pieces of a dark, dark night. It'll be like there's darkness even in the day. And a man will wake up in there and the one who is sitting, right, he's only using his cell phone. And, or the one who's, uh, and the one who's standing is using his, his, his phone even more. The one who's walking even more. The one who's running is even using satellite, okay, positioning for himself. And so that the Prophet said, وسلم, when you are in that situation, that the one who is, and there's no other situation that I can think of that this would happen in, except with the usage and the level of the usage of the internet, okay? Which is, the one who is sitting is better than the one who is standing, is better than the one who is running, except the usage of this information that then leads people to, what? Outside Islam, and also, what? Has created a situation of war and lockdowns and the situation of where somebody might come into your house because they're now starving because everything is closed and everything has gone virtual because this is one of the salient features of this lockdown so it seems that we have uh, basically entered uh, this type of phase and where if you're in the Muslim lands you'll see that the wars are there and people can enter into each other's houses for food, like is already happening in Syria, for example. Okay, so between this phase and this phase, where the Prophet says, you will have to flee to protect your deen. Now, what does this mean? It means uh, Islamophobia is yet to come. It means further economic devastations are yet to happen. It means that uh, more e technologies that will connect you uh, to more technologies that have to do with your body states, 
you're sitting, standing, walking, running, the level of use of technology and internet are going to be interconnected. The wrong information you're going to be consuming is connected to the internet. The, the, this is all going to lead to an economic devastation where even if you're in a Muslim place, Muslims will be coming into your house uh, ready to kill you to feed their families. Okay, And the Prophet said, be the better of the two sons of Adam because one will have taqwa and the other. They're both Muslims, right? The two sons of Adam are Muslims, but one will have taqwa, the other will not have taqwa. And so this is uh, where we're headed. I think, and I'd like your uh, feelings and your analysis uh, with me on these two traditions of the Prophet, whereas one is, the Prophet says he run he flees his for his protection of his deen, and the other is this situation of darkness, uh, pieces of darkness of night, where a person becomes kafir, and he's affected by his body positions, and also it leads to a situation where people will come to his house to kill him. So these two traditions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they're going to uh, probably overlap into one another but i think the first one will be the dark pieces of the night which is what we're going through right now leading to finally we have to leave our houses to protect our iman and so we may be asked to do things that go against our iman as we're already being asked to when it comes to our salah right people have to you know now so that time is already moving in that direction right we think of this as Oh, this is not like the time where is, there was an assault on Islam. Of course it was. We just didn't realize it. There was a big assault on Islam and Iman. Our Hajj had been basically stopped. Uh, our Hajj has been stopped for the for this upcoming year. Basically, it's going to be very few people. Our salawat, our prayers um, in the in the masjid have been altered. Uh, and we think that Islam is not being attacked. And behind this, so many anti-Islamic things are happening. So that is one thing. And then the internet, as people spend time on the internet, Google is changing its algorithms. Ju Google is changing its algorithms. So authentic Islamic information goes down. Unauthentic Islamic information comes up. And people will be confused. And knowledge will be lost. Okay? So now, what should you do? You should be on the internet to leave the internet. You should be on the internet to learn your deen, to create awareness. And you should be on the internet to get skills, to learn about the skills, to connect with the people in your local area who have the same goals as you. Okay? Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.